Hello friends, this video on electric charges and fields part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 16 before going ahead with part 17. So now we will talk about electric field intensity. So what is electric field was the concept. Electric field, what is electric field? It is the region around the source charge. And what is electric field intensity? Electric field intensity is the physical quantity which makes electric field measurable, right? For example, we measure distance. We denote it by some letter say S. We measure displacement. We denote it by some letter say D, right? We do it like that. So that is a measurable quantity. Similarly, electric field intensity talks about the measure, the magnitude and the direction of electric field. So you can use it alternately. Some people call it electric field. Some people call it as electric field intensity. So electrostatic force per unit test charge. That is how I just defined it, right? So electric field intensity is, is denoted by capital E and we define it as electric field E is equal to electric force per unit test charge. I got it from the previous screen right so where this test charge is a very small charge where test charge tends to zero because test charge is a vanishingly small charge why it has to be so small because if the test charge is not so small then it will have its own electric field as well so its electric field will start interacting with the electric field of the source charge so in order to define electric field we always consider an imaginary test charge of vanishingly small magnitude. Electric field intensity is a vector quantity that is it has both magnitude as well as direction. So when we talk about the direction of electric field intensity in case of a straight path let us suppose a straight path so it is always from it always originates from a positive charge and it goes towards a negative charge. So it always originates from a positive charge and goes towards a negative charge right. When it is about a curved path, let us suppose if it is a curved path, then the electric field intensity can be given by tangent at every point. So, but even there also it will originate from positive and it will terminate in negative. SI unit of electric field intensity is Newton per coulomb. That is from the definition because for forces it is Newton and for the test charge it is coulomb. So, it is Newton per coulomb. Right, so that that that's all defines uh, electric field and electric field intensity. Now we will see electric field intensity due to a point charge. I mean, we will derive an expression. I mean, I already defined you. Now we will see how did we get that expression, which I wrote just now. So how did we derive the expression for electric field intensity due to a point charge? So let us start with it. Let us suppose we have a point charge, say Q. So in this case, we let us consider it graphically so that it becomes easier for you to understand. So let us say that our point charge or the source charge is Q which is placed here. That is the origin. Let us suppose the test charge, uh, I'm sorry, the source charge Q is placed at the origin and our test charge that is Q0 which is a very small charge is placed here. So we have to calculate the electric field intensity at this point say P we call this point P due to the source charge right. So why do we basically imagine a test charge? We basically imagine a test charge at the point where we want to calculate the electric field intensity due to the source charge. So here we want to calculate the electric field intensity at some point P due to the source charge. So we have imagined that there is a test charge Q0 at point P. So let us suppose this is the position vector which represents the position of the point P or the charge Q0. Let us denote it by R. Okay. So this is my x axis. This is my y axis. And this is my z axis. Now, how do we define the position of this test charge that is Q0? The test charge Q0 is at point P 
which is defined by the coordinates x, y and z. Okay. So how do you define the position vector of the point P? This is x, i cap plus y, j cap plus z, k cap. Right, this is how you define the position of the test charge and the magnitude of this R is nothing but root over x square plus y square plus z square. You have studied all these things in your basic vector lessons, right? So now what would be the force experienced by the charge, by the test charge Q0 at P? So force experienced by Q0 will be what? It will be given by Coulomb's law that is the force will be equal to K Q1 Q2 so Q1 is Q0 Q2 is Q divided by R square into R cap R cap that is the unit vector R denotes the direction of the force so from this we can write E electric field what is electric field? We defined just in the previous slide that is force per unit test charge right so force is this per unit test charges k q by r square into r unit vector right so this we can write it as if you want to replace the unit vector you can write it as k q k q by r cube into r vector because that is how we define unit vector unit vector r is the vector r divided by the magnitude of r so now this is the expression in general for electric field. So now we can resolve it into its components. So we can define the electric field along x axis as k q x i cap divided by x square plus y square plus z square to the power 3 by 2. So we are writing the individual components of electric field. So the electric field is a vector quantity and it will it will have its components along all the three axes, right? Similarly, we can write EY that is the electric field along Y direction as KQY into J cap divided by X square plus Y square plus Z square to the power 3 by 2. Similarly, we can write down the component along Z axis which is equal to k q z i cap divided by x square plus y square plus z square to the power 3 by 2. Right? So these are the three components of the electric field. Right? So that means the net electric field due to a point charge can be resolved into its components in this way e x i cap plus e y j cap plus E Z K cap, right? It can be resolved in this form. Now let us suppose and the angles which they make with each other. For example, let us suppose it, in, let us consider it in this way. The electric field along X axis will make some angle with the horizontal. Similarly, Y axis will make some angle. Let us suppose the angles which they make is represented by alpha, beta and gamma. So how do we define them? We define them as cos alpha is equal to E x divided by magnitude E. Similarly, cos beta is defined as E y divided by magnitude E. Similarly, cos gamma is defined as E z divided by magnitude E. So what are these alpha, beta, gamma? This is nothing but the angle which the x component of electric field the angle at which this E x is oriented. Similarly, the angle at which the y component of electric field is oriented and similarly for z axis, right? So this is how we define electric field for a point charge. Now that we know we have defined electric field, we have fi found out a mathematical expression for electric field. So now it is the time to talk up to find out electric field of some different kinds of objects. Now we will find out the electric field due to infinite long conductor. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, 
study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.